You know what? I'm Pastor Ron. I want to thank you for being with us. I get to be your host the next few minutes. If you don't change that channel and stay right here where you are, you see a great big word behind me. Yep, it's called Together. What are we talking about? Because there's some things that can only happen when we get together that we do not have access to when we are alone. What are these things? What are the dynamics behind them and how do they work? That's what we're going to start talking about today. Please don't go away. Genesis 1:26 through 28. <clears throat> but for me to talk about this, I need to finish this, not about tithe and offering. I need, I need to go back to precepts, original intent, and I need to take this concept of the blessing of God and give you greater context of it, and that'll show you what it means to be together. God said, let us make man in our image. You ought to be able to quote this by now. You ought to be able to start in the middle and go backwards or forwards. <clears throat> Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. You know everything it says there. He covers the categories. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. <clears throat> in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them. That's what we talked about for five weeks. The blessing of the Lord. God put the stuff that was on him, on Adam, to cause air, earth, and heaven to operate in sync. Earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. It was meant to operate in synchronization with heaven. It was meant to operate by the same laws that govern the heavens. God made the heavens, then he made earth as a physical replica of the heavens, and then God had himself and then made a man in his image to govern the earth like he governed the heavens. And thus, so Adam was empowered to do that, God took his blessing and put it on Adam, and then he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. So the blessing of God on his life, it was a thing. Remember, we talked about the blessing. It's not transactional. It's not an event. It's not an offering. It's not you give God this and he gives you that back. It is a state of being on your life that you function in day in and day out. It doesn't leave. It doesn't come and go. It's something that is an, an aura. It is a magnetism that God puts on your life that makes you irresistible to the yes of man. Come on, it makes you irresistible to open doors and opportunities. I can tell you the blessing of God is far beyond my economy. The blessing of God is on my relationships. The blessing of God is on my house. The blessing of God is on my children. Come on, somebody. The blessing of God is on my children's children. The blessing of God is on my ministry, on my preaching in this church. The blessing of God is on everything. How many of you want to know the blessing that just sweeps all over your life and you live and you function under the state of being, of being blessed? Uh. <clears throat> so we understand that Adam had the blessing. Adam lost it. So many things right here. I got to go quickly. I don't have time to break it down. Adam took of the fruit after Eve was deceived by Satan, disguised as a serpent. He made the choice to not honor God. And in that choice, he forfeited that blessing. And the Bible makes it clear in Ephesians 2 that Satan became the God of this world. Scary thing. Because God gets blamed for everything. And the Bible makes it clear that Satan is the ruler of this world. You've got to understand the conflict of the ages is not over ownership. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But anybody who's ever leased anything or rented anything, you didn't own it, but you are in charge of all the activities that went on there during the duration of your lease. So it may have been a nail salon while somebody had it. It may have been a barber shop when somebody else got it. Come on, somebody. It may have been a shoe store when somebody else got it. And none of them owned it, but the activity changed with whoever was ruler. So God has never lost ownership. And Adam was its ruler. Have dominion. Subdue it. Multiply. Fill the earth. You are earth's governor. Run it like I run heaven. 
He could only do that with the power of the blessing on his life. When he forfeited that blessing, Satan became the ruler of this world. So you understand God, if an atom messes it up, then it can only be an atom that fixes it. So the Bible, the Bible calls Jesus the last or the second Adam. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world. It didn't say for God so loved people. For God so loved the world. So in other words, Jesus must be the answer to the world, not just people. So everything that has gone awry and everything that has gone wrong in the world, Jesus is the answer to that. So Jesus, the person, gives you eternity. But Jesus, his word, allows you to live life here victoriously. So he is the answer for the whole world. Everything that's going wrong, everything that is bad in life, everything that's vile, evil, and ugly that is going on, Jesus was God's answer to that. The first Adam forfeited, the second Adam restored it. You see what I'm talking about? The blessing was lost in the first Adam. The blessing was restored in the second. Can I go take this concept a little bit deeper? Can I just keep teaching about this blessing a little bit longer? Genesis 12. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you. Now people don't start shouting until verse 2. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You shall be a blessing. Look, look at it. I'll bless you and you shall be one. I'm going to put it on you, then you're going to be it. So I am going to take what I have and put it on you. And when I put it on you, you're going to walk in it. I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And you, all the families of the earth, shall be blessed. Go back to verse 1. So we're talking about God said, I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. Come on, somebody. I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. And you, all the families of the earth, shall be blessed. I'll make you into a great nation. And I've seen people preach that, and I've seen churches go nuts and start turning over chairs, tossing babies, and throwing shoes. I've seen people go crazy with that scripture. But you know what? We got to read verse 1. Because you can't just read what he's going to do. you got to read what you got to come out of. God said, come out, come out, come out, before he ever said, I'll bless you. Go back to verse 1. Get out of your country. This is going to hurt. The word country in the Hebrew means ethnicity. He says, you can't go in the pipe of blessing I'm going to take you to if all of your allegiances are in your cultural distinctive. And the enemy's got us backed in our corner fighting each other over things like the color of skin. He says, you got to come out, come out, come out from that. Why? Because he's made you a whole nother culture. He's made you a whole distinct. He took all of your distinction and made you one people. Hallelujah. And that's why redemption, where many become one. Uh, get out of your country. Get out of your family. That word family in the Hebrew means class. So quit having all the allegiances to where you came from and quit letting people classify you. Lower class, middle class, middle upper class, high class, poverty level. Uh, people stick you in a class. All those are man-made. God says, come out. Then the last thing he says is your family. The word family means come out of all of your generational curses. He said, come out of the limitations of culture. He said, come out of the limitations of class. He said, and break all of your mamas and daddies curses that they passed down to you. He said, and when you come out of those three things, I will make your name great. I will bless you. I will bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. Anybody that wants to live a life like that, you got 10 seconds to give the Lord God a praise in this place, shout hallelujah. Look at two people and say the blessed life, the blessed life. Come on, the blessed life. Come on, somebody. the blessed life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, a white boy ain't supposed to be able to do that, but I've come out. Hallelujah. Y'all acting up. Y'all being ugly today. <clears throat> Galatians. 
3, 16, and I'm going to go to 29. Okay, now God made this promise to Abraham. Okay, now roll with me about 4,000 years. And here's Paul talking to the church in Galatia. Now to Abraham, he's bringing up Genesis 12. To Abraham and his seed were this promise is made. Okay, well, I need to know whose seed is. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but one. This is not an individual blessing. This blessing of Genesis 12 travels all the way past Jesus, all the way to your address. He does not say, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. Verse 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. (laughs) So the blessing that God gave Abraham, I love this blessing stuff. I want to live the blessed life. This blessing that God gave Abraham, he said, If you are in Christ, this is supposed to go to Abraham's seed, singular. So it falls to Christ. Now, if I'm in Christ, then I am Abraham's seed. And I am an heir of this promise. So those of you that belong to Jesus, you are now eligible for your name to be made great. Come on. Come on. Somebody. You are now eligible to be blessed in such a way God will bless you. You are eligible to be, if anything curses you, God will curse it. And for you, through you, all the nations of the earth to be blessed. <laughs> are we doing all right so far? Uh, I got so much stuff up here I'm trying to figure out what I need to do and what I need to skip. Oh, I can't say that. You want me to say it? God said, I'm going to bless you. Then I'm going to turn around and bless those that bless you. He says, I'm going to give you natural things first. And if you learn how to use natural things properly, he said, then I'll give you the real stuff. I'll give you the power. I'll give you gifts of the Spirit. How can God trust you with things of the Spirit if he can't trust you with what he's given you in the natural? In this series, Ron Carpenter will show you the biblical truth to always prosper. If you ever get the blessing of God on your life, come on, I don't care how many haters you got. I don't care how many people unfollow you. I don't care how many people block you. I don't care, it doesn't matter because when you got the blessing, you're blessed coming in and blessed going out. You're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Come on, you're the head and not the tail. You're the lender and not the borrower and your haters can't do anything about it. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Miracles can come out of mistakes, and that's what Hope Carpenter discovered. Her marriage and ministry as she knew them were over, but God had other plans. And for the first time, she's telling the complete story in her new book, The Most Beautiful Disaster. You've never heard a story like this, and it's a story that will change the way you think about how God can turn things around. The Most Beautiful Disaster is available online or at all major bookstores. Make sure to get your book today. We're going to get back to that word in just a minute, but I just want to take a moment right now, right here in the middle, just literally a moment to just say thank you, to just say thank you that you believe in us, to thank you that you care enough to give, to thank you that you care enough. The Bible calls it an investment, the actual sowing of seed. I know we can look at it practically as paying the bills, but the fact is God calls it seed, and the seed that has gone out of your life I want you to know, I want to tell you this, never at any time before in history have the media department of this ministry, Ron Carpenter Ministries or the Church Redemption, ever seen the amount of salvations that we're seeing right now. And so I come to you to let you know that your seed is an investment that is being made on good ground because we are bearing fruit for the kingdom.
It just amazes me every week when I get the number of the people that have given their heart to Jesus Christ through TV sets and through the power of media and through all these different other virtual experiences that we have, and you have helped make that possible. Maybe you've been given a long time, a few times. Thank you. But notice we didn't run ads or commercials because we need more and more people to help us do more and more than we've ever done before. Maybe you've never given, but you've been touched and you're thinking about it. Whether it's a monthly partner or a one-time gift, we're going to send you this to say thank you for believing in us. We believe in that together we can do great things. Would you consider giving? Now, let's get back to this word. I have identified three places of blessing. We spent five weeks on one of them. Number two, Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> now this is one of those scriptures that it's hard to just read it. Because if you get the power of it, it'll make me want to just run all the way down the road shouting. <laughs> if you really grasp what's being said, so once I get started, I'm going to read all the way through verse 8, and I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey. Obeying with diligence. A constant awareness and intentionality at all time to do the right thing. If you, it shall. The shall is on it. The if is on you. So the power of Deuteronomy 28 does not lie with God. It lies with you. It will come if you. I don't need to know if you need to be going around saying if you because it sounds too much like something else. But if you. I'm trying to be my pronunciation. I'm trying. If you. It shall. It'll come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God <laughs> to carefully to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Verse 4. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body. That's your children. Who wants their children blessed? Who wants their grandchildren blessed? Who wants your bloodline and lineage blessed? Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herd, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flock. Verse 5. Blessed shall be your best it in your kneading bowl. Verse 6. Blessed shall ye be when you come in. Blessed shall ye be when you go out. Blessed were you the day they hired you. Blessed were they the day they downsized and let you go. Blessed were they the day you were dating them. Blessed were you the day you told him we not dating no more. I can't date you. Blessed are you when you walk in a place. Blessed are you when you exit a place. I'm preaching. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. God Almighty. They shall Y'all come in through one door, but God will cause them to run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doors. So they come one way, but God's going to kick them out seven ways. Oh, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouse and in all to which you set your hand. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Excuse me. Blessed shall ye be. Blessed shall ye be. It's a state of being. It's a state of being. Blessed shall ye be. Somebody shout, I am blessed. Shout, I am blessed. I am blessed. Come on, let's give Jesus praise in this place. Hey. Hey.
The second place of blessing is simple obedience. The power of your yes. The, 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 the gross weight of everything he said in Deuteronomy 28. When God talks like that, he's cutting covenant. God doesn't break covenant. The gross weight of simple obedience. The gross weight of being standing there and God said, Ron, I need you to speak to him. God, I don't know him. I'm running late. I'm just trying to pump gas. You don't know where he's at. I'm going to save his life. I need you to speak to him. Just yes. Ron, I need you to double tip. Why? God, the service wasn't even that good. But this is her third job and she ain't been home in a week. Just, John Maxwell put it this way. Just give God your life. Just, he's not asking you to take over the world. He's just asking you to say yes. And when you start saying yes, a whole lot of other yeses come out of that first yes. If you can just get in the habit of saying yes, you'll be amazed because bless shall you be going in. Bless shall you be. Obedience is a place of blessing. Obedience has a magnetic attraction to God that he cannot resist. It's irresistible to God. <laughs> Alignment. When you start saying yes, they tell me when I take my car if, the car, if the tires are out of line, they say, your tires wear out quicker. That's why some people are so tired. You're out of alignment. You have no energy. The Bible says you run and not grow weary. You walk and don't faint, but you're tired all the time. You're empty all the time. You're depleted all the time. You have no passion for the task. Why? Because you're out of alignment. They say if you line your cars up, you can prevent accidents. God will keep you from having so many train wrecks. God will keep you from making so many bad decisions. God has a way when you begin to come into alignment and you obey him that he begins to protect you from accidents. They say the fuel economy gets better when your tires are aligned. There's something about you that becomes more efficient there's something about you that becomes more effective and God begins to get in the pipes of your life and begin to oil them and all of a sudden things that were rigid begin to move smoothly. These are the things that happen when you get in alignment. The chiropractor knows if he can just get your spine in alignment, then your liver will work better. Your kidneys will work better. Your lungs will work better. He can change your circulatory system. He can change your uh, respiratory system. He can change your neurological system. If he can just get you to lie... Yeah. That's what he's saying in Deuteronomy 28. He said, you can't even know what I got for you, but I need you to line up. <laughs> the third place of blessing is what I leave you with today, and this lets me launch. Ephesians 3, excuse me, Ephesians 2, 21 and 22, I apologize. In whom, the, I'm talking about the church, in whom the whole building, uh-oh, being fitted, not at home, together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Do you know why God visits so many places and lives in so few? Because the people show up, but they're not fitted. It's not enough, do you like me? Do you like each other? Oh, I really like the pastor at that church. Well, thank you, I hope you do, I'm grateful, I try but do you like the person sitting next to you? Because God is trying to fit the building. We don't send people to growth track and try to get them in life groups because we need something to do. 
we know how God builds his building. Come on, sir. And when you get fitted to the right people, oh my God, it becomes a place not where he visits, it becomes a place where he lives. Next verse. In whom you, plural, uh, plural uh, you're right there, it's not singular, it's plural, are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Pastor Ron, why do you work so hard and tirelessly at building? Because we are being built together for a dwelling place. That's what I'm telling you about. Together, anything can happen. Because God lives in together. God don't live in me, myself, and I. God lives in together. You know, there's some people that uh, you can appeal to them because life is not going well and Jesus gets involved in the needs of human life. So some people are very open to accepting Jesus during a very difficult time. But not everybody's having a terrible time. There's some people where life, you know, like, Pastor, life's pretty good. Maybe life's good here, but have you prepared for the next one? Because the Bible says that this life is but a vapor, just a vapor compared to eternity to come. Jesus Christ not only gives you and equips you with the Word to live here in this earth and be blessed and successful, but He secures your eternity with Him forever. Would you accept Him now as your Lord and Savior? The prayer goes like this, I thank you, Lord that you died and rose again, that I might be saved. I thank you that you became the sacrifice for my sins. I ask you to wash me and cleanse me in your blood as I believe you died and rose again for me. I accept your gift of salvation and ask you to come live in my heart today. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Just like that, you've been born again. Now, you got to write in, call in, you got to email us, you got to do something to let us know because we want to take this journey together. He says, I'm going to give you natural things first. And if you learn how to use natural things properly, he said, then I'll give you the real stuff. I'll give you the power. I'll give you gifts of the Spirit. How can God trust you with things of the Spirit if he can't trust you with what he's given you in the natural? In this series, Ron Carpenter will show you the biblical truth to always prosper. If you ever get the blessing of God on your life, come on, I don't care how many haters you got. I don't care how many people unfollow you. I don't care how many people block you. I don't care, it doesn't matter because when you got the blessing, you're blessed coming in and blessed going out. You're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Come on, you're the head and not the tail. You're the lender and not the borrower and your haters can't do anything about it. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. 